Um, in my district of South Jersey, the infrastructure laws aiding the United States Army Corps of Engineers with a major dredging project in New Jersey's intracoastal waterway. The project will clear out the clogged maritime channels of the entire Jersey shore and make my community safer and more prosperous. The law has also provided funding for airports and roads and projects across my district. South Jersey has many infrastructure needs, but I will continue to advocate this, for this infrastructure law as it is implemented over the next five years. I supported this bipartisan infrastructure law because it included conservative, conservative regulatory policies negotiated by Republicans, including one federal decision. One federal decision cuts through red tape by requiring interagency cooperation, limited paperwork, and fixed permitting deadlines. This policy saves years of time and millions of dollars in the permitting of infrastructure projects. With inflation ravaging, the country is in critical situation that we need to reduce red tape so that the funding increases and the infrastructure law is not outpaced. That's why Republican negotiators, including these conservative regulatory policies. My concern is that this administration is far more focused on spending money than on saving money, and that irresponsible mentality could hear it, that that irresponsible mentality could hinder the implementation of the infrastructure law. One federal decision policy was put in place by President Trump in 2017 through executive order. President Biden repealed it on his very first day in office. Thanks to the infrastructure bill, one federal decision is now law and it must be implemented. So first question, Mr. Secretary, do you fully commit, fully commit that you are proactively working to implement one federal decision in line with the letter of the law? Yes, we are. I uh, thank you, first of all, for your support for this legislation and want you to know that we take very seriously the one federal decision provisions. Uh, some of those that we've been working on this regard include establishing schedules that are consistent with the two-year average uh, for most EIS or environmental impact statements, uh, issuing necessary authorizations, all necessary authorizations within 90 days of completing NEPA, uh, setting up a performance accountability system to track progress toward our goals, and reporting to this committee regularly on the timelines of, uh, of both the EISs and then the environmental assessments and categorical exclusions, as well as working with other agencies on how to make sure that those categorical exclusions are uh, uh, as efficiently managed as possible. So we'll continue our work on this and through the permitting dashboard, uh, aim to be as transparent as possible about uh, how we're actually tracking toward those goals. We, we would appreciate that and that could make a huge difference. Thank you. Second question I have, um, and Congressman Stauber touched on it a little bit, concerned about the batteries. I'm concerned about the environmental aspects of the batteries. And I'm concerned about that so much of it is controlled by China, so much is controlled in the Congo. It is virtual slave labor. We say as Americans that we are humane and we're human and we care about life yet we buy so many products from a country that absolutely has no concern about that at all. I don't understand how we do that. I don't understand how we buy products made by the Uyghurs. I don't understand how we buy, are going to be buying products from the Congo, but the Chinese controls the Congo. And what scares me about that, Mr. Secretary, is they control too much already. They are getting stronger, and I'm sorry to say it, we are getting weaker. And you know, um, he may not have been one of your favorite presidents, but he was one of my favorite presidents, Ronald Reagan. He said, there is no country that has ever been attacked because it's too strong. We have to get stronger. We have to produce our own goods and services. We have to produce our own cobalt if we're gonna do this. We have to produce our own elements and minerals. And finally, we have to make sure if we make standards for ourselves internally that we keep those standards for everybody else. You know what's happening now, and you do know this, China is 
creating tons of fossil fuel. Russia is. Uh, India is. Other countries are. They're not following the Paris Accords in most of Europe. We're doing it and putting ourselves at a deficiency and diminishing ourselves and making ourselves weaker. That is unacceptable. That's not the America I know. It's not the America I believe in. And we have to stop it, Mr. Secretary. Thank you. I yield back. Gentlemen's time has expired.